This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning is proud to announce that its virtual lab solution, Practice Labs, has helped over 1 million learners. Ensure personnel have the opportunity to test before deploying new updates without compromising your live system. Visit acilearning.com and give your IT team superpowers with ACI Training. Uh, joining us today from Semaphore is Reed Albert Gotti, uh, who's going to talk to us about Microsoft eyeing open AI. Welcome, I believe, back to the show, Reed. Yes, it has been a while, but thank you. Yeah, so good to have you here. So let's kick things off by talking about this potential deal between Microsoft and OpenAI. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know how certain this is and then Give us a rundown of the numbers that are involved in this potential deal. Yeah, I'd say the deal is pretty likely to happen. Um, I think the numbers could change. I mean, who knows? But what we reported the other day is that Microsoft is going to put around $10 billion into OpenAI, which is basically like almost an acquisition because they'll end up owning something like 49% of OpenAI. But it's not really an acquisition because this is unlike any venture deal I've ever seen uh, where Microsoft's profits are actually capped and they're actually going to get a, a percentage of all of OpenAI's profits until they recoup their investment. So in the end of this, like let's say OpenAI uh, invents you know, artificial general intelligence and becomes a $5 trillion company, uh, you know, they would actually end up with those shares back. For Microsoft because because the profits are capped, so it's a very unusual deal. Yeah, so that was actually one of the things that stuck out to me. Um, this this sort of first of all the return on the profits uh, at seventy five percent, and then um, the way that you know going forward there's there's an overall cap, and so it, it does sound like that's not typical in this kind of investing that this is a little bit different i'm curious uh, if you have any insight into why it's done this way is it because open ai is going well we really feel like we've got a thing here so we may come become that you know multi-trillion dollar company uh so we don't want to enrich microsoft that much i mean why do you think this is uh working out to be this way yeah open ai is an unusual company they if you remember they were actually founded as a non-profit by elon musk and some other mm -hmm. people and then they transitioned into a for-profit company and they're now rolling out these products, but they still have a nonprofit that the company is supposed to benefit. So what they've said is they want to cap profits so that ultimately the money will, will start flowing back to the nonprofit in sort of this waterfall structure. So it's really their, um, it's really their sort of like uh, philanthropic, uh, you know, altruistic side. That's that's at least that's why they say they're structuring it this way. Interesting. So I was wondering about that myself, uh, given that this company did start out as this uh, not profit, not for profit company or nonprofit company that was, uh, you know, making AI, but also trying to sort of keep an eye on AI and make sure that it's always for the good of humanity, et cetera, et cetera. And then they started coming out with these different uh, public facing, not products, but um, demos at the very least. And it did feel like things were transitioning a little bit. Um, so what you're saying is that not-for-profit or nonprofit portion is not going away. It's still there, uh, but they're just going to have a for-profit arm. Is that is that the understanding? It is. Yeah, that's how it's structured. So, okay. you know, OpenAI, the company, um, is a for-profit profit venture, but they actually send money back to this nonprofit, which is really fascinating. I mean, the whole idea was that um, I think that that Elon Musk and others had was that, you know, artificial intelligence is this dangerous technology um, in the way that like in the most science fiction way possible, right? Like Terminator <laughs> um, taking over humanity or trying to destroy humanity or something. Um, and so we need to sort of, you know, act very sort of tread very carefully while uh, creating the technology. And I think it's kind of interesting. It's like the philosophy is, well, if if this technology is going to move forward and happen, then the people who are really cognizant of the risks should be the ones building it. Um, and that's that's kind of the philosophy that underlies open AI. And I think a lot of people who work there, they really do sort of see this as a as an important mission for humanity. 
Um, meanwhile, ChatGPT three and all this new Dolly and all this stuff is like ter- looks like it could be just a, an amazing uh, new wave of consumer technology. Absolutely. Now, getting back to Microsoft, um, this is only kind of the latest bit of Microsoft's involvement with OpenAI. Um, tell us about the company investing in 2019. I wasn't aware of this. Oh yeah, so they yeah that that Microsoft really helped OpenAI kind of. Uh, develop this technology. They they invested a billion dollars uh, back in 2019, and probably more interestingly, they they st- they created they built a supercomputer, one of the world's largest supercomputers, with something like 280,000 CPU cores. So they they actually had to build you know hardware just because this stuff is so energy intensive. I mean, it's not something that you can just run on the on the typical cloud. I think Sam Altman said it was something like two to three cents per query that it costs the company every time someone uses chat GPT three or chat GPT. Sorry. So, you know, it's it, 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 Microsoft. I think the big benefit for them here is not so much like the promise of profits from this investment. It's that they get to be on the forefront of this really transformative technology and actually learn uh, how to build the cloud and how to, how to, you know, create this stuff. So I think they, they don't want to miss the next wave. Like they missed, you know, search and mobile. Yeah. And so speaking of that, I, I remember um, them talking, Sam Altman talking about how much it costs and how much it costs like, per day to be able to do chat GPT. <laughs> and it kind of had me every time I would go over chat GPT going, oh man, I, I, I kind of feel bad. I'm costing this company a bunch of money, but um, <laughs> you know, th- that would Don't make you, <laughs> thank you. That would make you wonder about chat uh, or rather Microsoft making an investment in a company that is basically just bleeding out money, but you, or rather you and uh, your co-author in the piece talk about how this really isn't a gamble for Microsoft. And you briefly touched on it just then. Um, tell us about kind of the, the future uh, looking that Microsoft is doing in making this investment. I mean, yeah, my view is that, look, I, yeah, they are, I don't think OpenAI has some concrete business model that's proven yet. But they and they are gonna they are gonna bleed a lot of money, but that money is gonna go right back to Microsoft. Um, I probably should have mentioned earlier that investment for a billion dollars that they they put into OpenAI earlier. A lot of that was actually cloud credits. Microsoft has you know their Azure cloud, so when OpenAI is bleeding money, they're they're bleeding right back to Microsoft. So I think that reduces Microsoft's risks somewhat, um, and I think it actually helps them sort of like in a way, um, boost their cloud business. They're chasing, you know, Amazon, AWS, uh, and they're, and I think Google's probably super worried. I read somewhere that inside Google, it's like a code red, um, because, you know, they see this happening. And, uh, while Google is certainly on the forefront of AI and actually helped develop a lot of the technology in chat GPT, um, they haven't really figured out a way to consumerize it. Mm. Um, and I, and I think that has a lot to do with just the cost because, you know, Google has so many users. If they start, if they just like added a chat GPT type feature to, you know, Google search and billions of people started using it, like they would just, the, the, <laughs> the amount of money they'd be up. spending would be staggering. Wow. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't considered that part of it that, uh, you want, you might want to release one of these features, but the, if you've got a bunch of users, the cost really adds up now. How could Microsoft end up incorporating, because it's not just an investment in the company uh, in the sense that, you know, you're, you're betting on a, a future where OpenAI really nails it, but also the tools that OpenAI has available now, uh, there's been some talk of incorporating that into its products. How would Microsoft do that? And uh, in, in doing so, then are we looking at one of these situations where uh, they they're costing themselves a lot of money because there's so many users out there. Yeah, I, it was really interesting. I think the information first reported about their plans in detail to kind of like incorporate this into Bing, their search engine and other, you know, Microsoft Office products, stuff like that. I mean, they they do have, you know, remember Clippy, we've made a lot of Clippy jokes, but, you know, they do have this sort of autocomplete feature in in Word that's similar to, you know, Google Docs has that as well. So you could see how this stuff would start powering those things. But you're right. I mean, the, the cost is is super high. I think that's where they're, uh, you know, building this supercomputer really helps because they're, I'm sure 
they're looking, they would have to be looking for ways to kind of cut the cost down on, you know, the, the, the actual implementation of the, of the technology. Right. So they may have, I mean, that, that may be where they they might be even ahead of Google. I'm just guessing, um, mm-hmm. just based on having developed this now for a few years with, uh, open AI, I'm sure they've been aware of the problem and are trying to work on it. Absolutely. One last question for you, kind of an open-ended one. Uh, any other insights you'd like to share about this deal and kind of what you've seen so far, what uh, you're predicting going forward? Yeah. I mean, I think I think this deal probably will happen in some form or another. I think one question is, um, you know, there were a lot of venture capital firms that have invested in OpenAI open AI as well. Uh, we didn't talk about the valuation yet. I mean, tw- it's $29 billion, which is really high for a company that doesn't have, you know, a business model yet. Um, and, and it's sort of unclear exactly what the model will be. So I wonder if, if venture firms are, you know, how they're thinking about this investment, right? Because Mm -hmm. it's, you know, they don't have the same sort of like, you know, I guess strategic interest that Microsoft has, uh, they need to make a return and, and make a return fast. And then the returns are capped. So we haven't really heard a lot from from the VC world yet on this, and I'd be interesting. It would be interesting to see what happens there. Absolutely. Well, Reed Albergetti, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, always appreciate your insights. Of course, people can head over to semaphore.com to check out your work, but is there anywhere else folks should go to be able to keep up with what you're doing? Sure. I'm still on Twitter, uh, at Reed Albergati. Um, and yeah, please sign up for the newsletter. The, the technology newsletter comes out every Wednesday and Friday. It's free. Um, so the business one is free as well, uh, which is where, you know, Liz Hoffman, my co-author on this story, uh, writes the biz newsletter. So we're new, uh, check us out. I think you'll like it. Beautiful. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. 